I've always steered away from using visual effects whenever possible. I think that there are certain things you can't achieve otherwise, but in the past I've always been reticent to use visual effects to the extent that other filmmakers might. That being said, in the last few years, there have been a lot of wonderful visual effects movies where I, it, it, it's beginning to become seamless even to me, and I'm a person who understands the way that they work, and I oversee them. Certainly in doing a movie like Iron Man, there's no way to do this film without them. And so the balance that you, you try to strike as a director, I think, is to mix up the visual effects with practical effects in a way where you start to forget where one begins and the other ends. Okay. We looked at all the vendors that we could have doing uh, uh, the special effects on this, and uh, we isolated different companies all over the world that we thought would be good. We looked at them for specific tasks that we thought they might be the best at. And uh, within that, we got a, uh, looked at a bunch of tests that they did. Right now we have three companies doing the visual effects for uh, Iron Man. We have Industrial Light and Magic in San Francisco doing um, the lion's share of the work. It's the hardest work, I think. The Orphanage, also in San Francisco, which are XILM people and now have a smaller company. And they're doing some of the smaller stuff. And then we have a very small house in Vancouver, Canada called the Embassy, who's doing uh, the Mark I sequences, which is the, uh, um, the most, uh, the crudest suit the one he makes out of spare parts. Doing Iron Man, it's, uh, it's something that's been a lot longer process. It's more like a marathon than a race, but it's, it's been something that everyone's been really, really into doing. We started with the scan that we were given, and um, the scan didn't include all of the pieces, so we had to go in, add pieces that weren't included in the scan, and adjust things that maybe weren't entirely accurate. So there was a lot of remodeling that had to be done to get it to the final state. And then we had to also do what we call unwrapping, which is you give this look, you basically flatten out all the pieces so you can then texture it with photos or hand-painted textures. We were also given a lot of high-res images of Robert Downey because there's a few shots where he approaches camera, the suit comes right by camera. And so using those images, again, we have to like flatten it out to get facial textures going. The first Mark suit has all the different signatures of all the parts that are on it. So, you know, you'll see a little bit of paint from one, you know, uh, an insignia of Stark Industries from another. Little details like spinning fans in the back and things like that were added too. We did also rig up these pieces. These have the drive belts that kind of control his legs. So every time you move the leg up, everything rotates to correspond. Well, it's, it's pretty damn close to the actual practical guy. I think we can cut back and forth. And it's, it's pretty seamless, I think. Here is a mocap sequence that we got that they shot down in LA at Giant. Um, and we got the mocap and we transferred it onto a, the rig of our 3D model. It's somewhat imperfect when it first comes in. This is the mocap of one of the sequences where he's walking down a hill with his flamethrower going. Once we get that and we map it onto our rig, it looks a little bit like that. So there's all kinds of problems with the shoulders and with his head. And once we clean that up, we end up with something looking a little bit more like this. based on a still shot. So we have a still plate that was actually scanned 
at e-film at 4K so that we can move in on the plate and actually do a camera move down through it that's added in the post. But anyway, we take all those layers, which are of the CG Iron Man. Uh, there's computer-generated smoke that goes in front of him as well to blend him back into the background, the CG reflection pass, and then color correcting. We even have little Robert Downey's eyes in there, and he's blinking up and down. Actually, a little bit, uh, he has a little blinking, and he follows motion. So we move a null somewhere where we think the, in the insurgent should be, and his eyes will track and follow them in that area where we think it should be looking. So this is one thing we did where, uh, for one thing, the, the guy in the suit could not stand up like this or bend in that position. Even when we, we motion captured the actor, there's still some issues where you would see pass through. His hand may move and his forearm may intersect with his bicep or his hip may intersect with something else. Like right in here, you can see this has to be really close where it's actually moving and not intersecting with his hip to make it look real. And then once that, once the CG is done, it comes down here and the compositors put everything else together and make it, make it look real. And this is a really interesting shot here because actually the director, John Favreau, is actually the motion capture, motion capture, motion capture actor in this particular scene. And uh, the original shot was done with, a, um, with the practical guy in the suit. Uh, there was a little bit of a stumble and a bit of a weird move at the end after he did the punch. And, Production really wasn't all that happy with it, and we're working on this shot right now, so you'll see that this is a much less final looking shot. Iron Man is really rough looking, it's a low res render, but you can actually see John's motion capture in there, and he's, he's done a really good punch on the guy, sent him flying, and uh, it's just a much more heroic stance, which is cool. And uh, it's good that John got, John got to get in that suit, and uh, he can tell his friends for years to come how he got into Iron Man's suit. Everyone in our industry wants to make shiny metal robots, you know? So, uh, so having a big metal robot guy running around blowing things up is kind of your dream job. I remember talking to John Nelson way back and we were talking about, well, what are we going to do with Iron Man? Because we've got Robert Downey Jr., who's an amazing character actor and is all about the face and the eyes but we're sticking him in this metal suit where nobody's going to be able to see him. How are we going to solve that problem? Gauge heads up display. Check. Afford all preferences from home interface. We'll do so. 19 months ago, I walked into visual effects supervisor John Nelson's office, and on his wall, he had a picture from 2001, A Space Odyssey, of Dave in his helmet with all the reflections on his face in the slit scan sequence. And I said, well, what are you, what's that doing on the wall? And he said, well, come with me. And we walked over to the storyboard artist's and they had drawn these shots of Tony inside his mask. But they weren't inside his mask because there was this depth to it with graphics in front of his face. And I said, that's going to be the coolest thing in this movie. The HUD was, in many ways, kind of the dream job that we always are sort of dying to get at the orphanage. I mean, um, you know, we're a visual effects house, and oftentimes we are asked to do visual effects where it's like, make this jet look exactly like a jet, or make this explosion look exactly like you know exactly what it looks like. And the HUD was one of these things where Make something that you've never seen before, that nobody's ever seen before, but yet something that everybody thinks is really cool. Ooh.